This patient needed an upper left second molar removed, and uh, again, I mean, it's a restorable tooth, but the patient just didn't want to go ahead with that, so um, it's having pain, wants it out. The big consideration here is the sinus. You'll see the floor of the sinus and how the roots are kind of up around there. So we do need to be a little bit cautious with that. And the bone is fairly thin distal to there, right? So we got to be, I guess, cognizant of how much pressure we're applying to these teeth. I'm just testing the anesthesia, making sure that everything is fine for the patient. When I have a sinus like this that's kind of close down there and there's not a lot of bone around, um, I'm a little more judicious in terms of how much I'm going to push on a tooth. So it doesn't mean that we won't try to elevate it, uh, which you'll see in a minute. We will try that and see how the tooth is moving. I'm just kind of lifting up the buccal tissue a little bit and uh, freeing up the tooth a bit by pushing on that distal buckle there, applying a bit of pressure. This is the three millimeter luxator, again on the mesiobuccal aspect of that tooth. And we're gonna be pushing here and you'll see the tooth is moving a bit or it will move a little bit for us but not a ton and again you don't want to be super forceful with these right because too much pressure um, you can end up fracturing away some bone back there which is less than ideal so give it a good go you see the tooth lifts up even a little bit but it's not quite delivering so we're going to switch our plan of attack which is just to section the tooth um, so we're using a 45 degree nsk electric surgical handpiece and we're just going to be cutting here. Now I'm showing you in the mirror here. Um, you can certainly section looking in the mirror. If you can use direct vision, I mean, that's usually better. But for the purposes of the video, you want to be uh, seeing what I'm doing, right? And so we're trying to show you that here. So I'm just cutting mesial to distal. And I'm right now using a 702 surgical burr. So 702, again, is usually fat enough to give a pretty good trough and section apart the roots, but not so big as to, I guess, completely obliterate the tooth and not give you anything to elevate on, right? So we're just making that trough here to separate the palatal root from the uh, mesial and distal roots. And again, we're going to take this right down to the frication and... Um, try to help to separate things up a bit. The next step will be to put our elevator down in there. You can see we're down in where the pulp chamber would be now. You can see it. So we're going to go a little bit further, right? And when you look into these cuts that you make, you'll see it bleeding. And you got to look where the bleeding is. So get good visibility, suction it out, rinse it out if you need. If you've got good bleeding kind of from the base of that section down at the deepest part, um, typically then you're through to the bone. You'll have a different tactile sense to it. You can see there's still a little bit of tooth present um, when we stop there to look. So we can still go deeper yet, right? Um, that's what I'm doing there is just trying to, I guess, illustrate that for you. So here now, same thing, we're getting pretty close to the depth. So we're going to just split the rest with our elevator. And again, we're just rotating and playing those sides off one another to help to I guess luxate the two parts, right? The mesial and distal root are being luxated together against the palatal root. We're trying to have the elevator seated deeply so we're not applying too much coronal pressure on the tooth structure because if you do, sometimes you'll fracture away some of that uh, coronal tooth structure. So here I'm just trying to elevate again from the mesial, just in the off chance that it's gonna lift out. And again, it's not, so we're gonna go back and we're just going to section apart the mesial and distal root. And you'll see that that distal part is kind of broke away or decayed away, right? And uh, that's no big deal. So we'll continue on chugging along. You'll see how the flutes get kind of gunked up on the burr, right? They're getting kind of white. That decreases their cutting efficiency. When you look at the water spray here, so this, this handpiece does uh, water spray or water jet. And so basically it uses the water jet so it's not putting air into the surgical field. Um, the amount of water that we were getting on the flutes probably was less than ideal in this case here. But sometimes you get too much and your patient ends up drowning while you're <laughs> trying to section their tooth. I am using the IsoDry, which is a system that helps to protect... Uh, the airway, but it also suctions. That's what the patient's biting on. It's fantastic. 
and uh, use it lots for oral surgery and, and just routine dental stuff. So here I've, I've basically separated down the mesial root from the distal root. We're going back to that mesial buckle with the luxator. We're just lifting up and see that pops up there and lets loose. It's a long root on there. 76S forcep, we're just grabbing the palatal root now and we've already luxated it, right? We did that early on. So now we're just gonna lean on it a bit and typically rotation works really well with these. You'll see we're twisting and out comes the palatal root. And then we're gonna go for the distal root, which again had that decay on it. So we wanna to try to grab fairly deeply. You can see it's already kind of busting up before we even grab it. And it just turns to mush, right? So now we're gonna go back with the crier elevator and we're gonna engage that distal root. Crier's gotta be sharp to do this. So make sure it's sharp and it's a, a mini crier. And then we're lifting up and levering, right? Doing that wheel and axle motion with the crier, lifting along the uh, path of withdrawal for the tooth. And you can see we're left with a very nice socket where the gingiva isn't uh, affected. And the bone is barely touched, right? So it's, it's very nice, no injury to the sinus, and uh, all is well.